So people in Delhi have three options, A breathe the toxic air, B leave the city and their life behind or C buy air purifiers and bunker indoors. This is what you get for being tax paying law abiding citizens, squid games with bad air. Right now breathing the air in Delhi is equivalent to smoking 50 cigarettes on a daily basis and losing 9 years in a snap. To understand what factor is enabling us to deduce that living in Delhi is hazardous, we need to understand AQI or Air Quality Index. An Air Quality Index or AQI is an indicator developed by government agencies to communicate to the public how polluted the air currently is or how polluted it is forecast to become. As air pollution levels rise, so does the AQI along with the associated public health risk. The Air Quality Index is divided into six categories, each with a different level of health concern. In some areas of Delhi, the AQI has crossed over 1700 and Delhi is reporting on an average AQI of 488 which is five times more than the prescribed limit. Let me put that into perspective. The advised and prescribed limit of AQI is well within 100 and here we are getting 1700, 500. This is quite exponential and alarming. The situation is so deplorable, so pathetic and worse in the capital of our country that patients who come from tier 2, tier 3 cities right for better medical facilities are being instructed not to come to Delhi. Whenever people who have some sort of mild allergy, they come to Delhi, they get affected because of the pollution and all their allergies and ENT infections and chest infections go up. So they obviously of course, I advise them if they, it is possible for them to move out, better to stay away from this place and stay at places where the pollution is not much. This is not an issue to doze off right or is going to doze off after a certain period of time, especially when the topmost court in our country, the Supreme Court, has declared free air as a constitutional right. Yes, a constitutional right. We have fallen to such a level as a society and a nation to even mention this basic fact. As a matter of fact, right now Delhi's AQI has lowered down and is in the range of 300 to 400. But these faced on a daily basis are more lethal than a sudden one day gem, for instance 1000 plus AQI level. Let us move down to the sources and before we comprehend what these sources are, we need to understand PM and of course it is not Prime Minister, it is particulate matter. PM basically refers to the particles that are defined by their diameter for air quality regulatory purposes. The most prominent particulate matter types are PM 2.5 and PM 10. To understand the sources, let us classify them into two blocks and this classification will be based on the term of these effects. Number one will be the seasonal or transitory effects and number two will be the non-seasonal or everlasting effects. The two major seasonal sources responsible for Delhi's air pollution are number one stubble burning and number two the firecrackers burned during festivals like Diwali. Stubble burning, it is the practice of intentionally setting fire to the leftover straw after harvesting grains, for instance like rice and wheat. It is a common technique for quickly clearing fields and is still widespread today. Stubble burning contributes to air pollution by releasing particulate matter into the atmosphere. In India, stubble burning is a major cause of air pollution, especially in the parts of northern India and in Delhi, up to 58% of air pollution is attributed to burning crop residues. Cities like Delhi often experience a sharp spike in AQI levels, turning severe during the stubble burning season and that's what we have observed even in the recent time. Diwali firecrackers are not the prime reason behind the pollution that takes place nowadays but we can't deny the harmful effects it leads to by bursting them such as the release of particulate matter as mentioned earlier in this video PM 2.5 and PM 10 a sudden spike in AQI or air quality index and the formation of thick smog that is smoke plus fog it is quite toxic and pernicious the emissions of SO2 11 coal based thermal power plants within a 300 km radius are emitting 281k tons of SO2 as per a recent report. You must have studied that SO2 is a greenhouse gas, right? Right? Yeah. It not only pollutes the air, it also leads to greenhouse effect and that eventually leads to the ultimate catastrophe of all, global warming. 
Now moving on to the non-seasonal causes that are leading to air pollution. Dust is the major non-seasonal cause of air pollution in India and it is quite prevalent in cities like Delhi and Bengaluru. Now let us move to the subset of it. Thereby a major source of dust is from construction work, unmechanized and unstructured sweeping by the daily workers as well as vehicle emissions. Now let us move to the subset of it. That is a major solution of air pollution from dust is via vehicle emissions and according to IT Delhi 79% of the emissions from vehicles are due to two wheelers and trucks. These vehicles usually have poor fuel quality leading to traffic congestion, smog and of course the emission of pernicious particulate matter like PM 2.5 and PM 10. This whole chain of events leading to the vehicle emissions has become an inevitable loop or cycle. Let me explain that. This chain event takes place due to lack of opportunities faced by people living in tier 2, tier 3 cities. Thereby they shift to tier 1 cities. But here they face lack of proper public infrastructure. Thereby leading to rapid urban growth and overpopulation. And people shifting to personal vehicles over public transport and thereby more emissions. For stubble burning, two things can be done. One is promoting alternative practices and number two being pushing for awareness campaigns. Alternative practices slash techniques like residue management, example using happy cedars and converting stubble into bioenergy or compost. And when it comes to awareness campaigns, educating farmers about the health and environmental costs of stubble burning will prove beneficial. Rather than completely obstructing the bursting of crackers, we can limit the usage of it. At the end of the day, we need to have fun that is reasonable and rational, but not at the cost of hampering the people around us, the ones that matter the most. For dust, the temporary solution is sprinklers, whereas the permanent pollution is paved roads, streamlined roads, and we need to push for mechanized sweeping over the usual sweeping that takes place nowadays. Another valuable suggestion given by IIT Kanpur is to cover sites and materials using green covers. These green covers can be used so that the dust doesn't fall back into cities. All it requires for this step to be carried out is strict checks and regular patrols. Now you may be wondering what are the actions being taken by the governments, the central and state government. Let us know them. National Clean Air Program, the program that was launched by the Environment Ministry, Government of India, is a time-bound strategy to bring down particulate matter levels such as PM 2.5 and PM 10 by 20-30% 20, by 2024. Now it has been postponed to 2026. Yes, it was initially scheduled for 2024. Now it has been postponed to 2026. 2026. And when it comes to the state government of Delhi, it is considering and vouching for a cloud seeding project to combat the city's air pollution problem. A cloud seeding project is nothing but a weather modification technique to produce artificial rain. But experts caution that cloud seeding is not a long term solution to air pollution and should not be seen as a substitute for addressing the root causes of this issue. This political apathy in our country and I am saying this is because the Delhi and Noida governments have only used 40% of the funds that had been allocated to them to curb pollution and as a matter of fact they are spending more on marketing their uh, techniques in order to get rid of pollution than the actual substance in that. The thing here is not the absence of solutions but the absence of execution and proper implementation. China was going through pretty much the same situation in 2012-2013 with its capital Beijing being the most affected. But post a decade now or so, its pollution levels have fallen by 54%, a whooping 54% in just a decade. This transformation was not an accident. It was carried out by carefully planned initiatives and bold decisions. The following are the steps that China took to make its country pollutionless. Let's go post back to 2014. The Chinese Premier Li Keang declared a war on pollution in response to the country's air and water pollution issues. Now China in 2014 thereafter invested 270 billion dollars for a period of 5 to 6 years to cut down the air pollution faced in its capital. Number 1. Shifting from a car centric system to an urban mobility model via railway networks, shutting coal plants, creating low emission zones to restrict pollution from vehicles and thereby investing in electric and hybrid vehicles, turning cities into eco-friendly walking zones. 
They are also invested in an air quality monitoring system to track pollution in real time. And this is special because this helps them to identify the pinpoint pollution hotspots and act on them with precision. This made Beijing, which was once associated with its hazardous air quality, to Beijing Blue, a term that is used to describe its cleaner air and cleaner skies that have emerged in the recent times due to the continuous efforts that have been poured by the Chinese government. And this is how a responsible and accountable nation acts. There is proper and systematic coordination between the people and the government. The thing to note here is, such an effective and well-oriented approach is coming from a non-democratic government. That's the thing that needs to be pointed out here. It's not that Indian cities have not worked on this or they have not made significant progress. They have done it and they have achieved quite environmental targets before the deadline. But Delhi has been a complete mess hit. By the state government, the central governments and we as people of this nation are also responsible for it. The most important parameter to keep in check is the political intent and will. This is what China succeeded in doing so. The blame game is not going to help anyone. It is just going to prolong the severity of the situation and hamper the future of the contemporary and upcoming generations. We need to call out and compel the people in authority to act on this catastrophe and make Delhi the capital, the heart of India to live in and prosper.